In this video, I'll show you how to use Asta Dex, which is a perps Dex. So we can trade crypto perpetual futures on here. The way it works is that we connect our wallet and then we make a deposit of USDT into the Dex. We then have that value to go ahead and trade with. And if we want to withdraw our money, we can simply withdraw that USDT into our wallet on one of these chains. So for right now, BNB chain, Ethereum, Arbitrum and Solana, they may add support for other chains in the future. But as long as you have a wallet on one of these chains, you can easily deposit and withdraw USDT. So what I'll do is connect my wallet and I'm going to connect my Rabi wallet right here. I'll leave the link to Astadex down below. It's astadex.com, I believe, but uh, that link will take you through to the proper site. There may be fakes out there, so don't log into anything uh, that is a fake. You might be able to get a referral bonus via that link as well. Uh, so I'm going to connect my wallet here. Now I'm using Rabi, which is a Ethereum style wallet. So that means I can use BNB, Arbitrum and Ethereum. If you use Solana, you can connect with Phantom Wallet probably and then use uh, Solana to deposit and withdraw. Now, once I've connected, what you have to do is send a request. This is like logging into the DEX because it's a decentralized exchange. You don't have an email address and password. You just log in with your wallet. So I'm going to send that request and this gets my key. This is just signing, as you can see here. So there's no uh, gas fee or anything like that. It's essentially just like logging in uh, and then you can make a deposit into the exchange. If you don't have a crypto wallet set up yet, then I'll leave some videos below in the description box on how to set up a Phantom wallet or a Rabi wallet. Phantom for Solana, Rabi for the other three chains. Once you've got that set up and you've got some crypto in your wallet, you can actually deposit it to the DEX. If you know how to use crypto wallets, I'd skip to the next section, but I'll show you how to uh, deposit some assets into your wallet so that you can then put them into the DEX. The first thing we need to do is figure out which chain that we're using. I'm going to use Arbitrum. And that means that I'm going to need two assets in my wallet on the Arbitrum network. The first one is the USDT that I want to deposit into the DEX. And the other one is the gas coin to pay for that transaction. When you deposit and withdraw it into the DEX, you're using the blockchain. And so you need to pay a blockchain fee known as gas. On Arbitrum, the gas coin is ETH. So I need to buy ETH, $5 worth, and also the USDT that I want to deposit in. On the Ethereum mainnet, it's ETH and USDT as well. On BNB chain, it's BNB coin and USDT. If you're using Solana, it'll be Sol and USDT. So I'm going to use Arbitrum right here. And in my wallet, you should be able to see that I have some USDT on the Arbitrum chain. And down here, I've also got some ETH on the Arbitrum chain, like $5 worth just to pay for gas. So they're the two assets that I need to go and buy and deposit into my wallet. Now, I've got my wallet address at the top here, so I'm just going to copy that. And then from there, we can make the deposits into my wallet. So I'm going to go over to my centralized exchange. You need to buy on a centralized exchange, right? That's where you get your actual fiat currency in and then swap it for crypto. So uh, I've got USDT here that I've bought. I'm going to withdraw it to my wallet address. Now, because Rabi is an Ethereum style wallet, you actually have the same wallet address for BNB, Arbitrum and Ethereum. It's the same wallet address. So I'm going to paste in my wallet address. But importantly, I need to tell the centralized exchange which uh, blockchain that I want to actually receive it on. And so I'm going to choose Arbitrum. You can also choose the ETH mainnet if you want. And of course, you can choose BNB chain. But that USDT is going to go over to my wallet address and I have to choose the chain. I'm going to use Arbitrum. So I'm going to click Arbitrum here and they're going to send that USDT, whatever it may be, out into my wallet address on the Arbitrum network. Now, also, I need to go and buy $5 worth of ETH and deposit that across the same network and to the same wallet address just so that I have gas to pay for the deposit into the DEX. Once you've got some of the gas coin on the network that you're using and the USDT in your wallet, you can deposit that into the DEX. So go up to the top, press deposit. Perpetual account is fine. You can choose any of these. You can swap the money in your account once it's in the DEX anyway. So it doesn't matter where it goes, but choose perpetual if you want to trade that. Then choose the blockchain that you actually want to use to deposit in. I think BNB chain is probably a little bit quicker, one to three minutes. Uh, on Arbitrum, it says five to 10 minutes. Uh, that's how long it would take to deposit in. Choose the amount that you want to deposit like this and then approve USDT. So firstly, you have to approve the token. That lets the DEX manipulate the balance in your wallet. So you have to sign that and confirm. And then once that transaction has gone through, once it's approved, you can then actually deposit the uh, currency into your account. So you can see it says deposit now. So that uh, transaction went through and it's approved. So I'm going to press deposit. This is another transaction and you have to make sure that everything's okay here and then press sign and pay the gas fee again. Once that's done, the USDT will be in your wallet and then you can use that balance to go ahead and trade. That USDT has now been sent into the DEX and you can see in the top right, I've got an available balance now. And to go ahead and trade, we need to enable trading. So press that down here. You need to sign another transaction. So press connect. 
That's going to go through to the wallet. Just check everything here. It says that uh, you know it's going to sign the transaction for you. So go ahead, press confirm. Once that's done, you can see I can now go long and short and we can trade on the DEX. Now, in order to go ahead and trade, we just need to tell the DEX the margin mode that we want to use and how much leverage that we want to use. So I'll explain that now. Like I said, I'll leave the link below to Asta as well. If you want uh, to go through, you might be able to get a bonus via that link. I'll leave the Apex link below as well, which is a, a DEX by Bybit, which is basically the same thing. Once we've got crypto in our wallet, we can use any DEX that we want really, uh, but they give uh, slightly bigger uh, fee discounts via that link from, from Apex as well, if you want to use that. But what we need to do is choose the margin mode. So go to the right hand corner where it says cross, click that and cross margin means that the USDT that we've put into the DEX, this value is going to be used to open and fund all of the different positions that we may have. So if you've got five different positions, Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, BNB, long and short, whatever, the USDT that we have will fund all of those positions simultaneously. With crypto futures, you're not actually trading the crypto. What you're trading is the price of the crypto. It's a contract. And so you can make profits or losses with your trades, right? And the USDT is there not to exchange for the asset, but simply to fund potential losses in the trades that you may have. And so with futures, we can use leverage because let's say you have $1,000 of USDT, that's to pay for losses. So your trade size can be anything you want. It can be a thousand, it can be two, three, four, five thousand, because you've just got that thousand dollars there to pay for losses. You're not actually exchanging the dollars for the asset. So that's why you can use leverage. But with margin, right, margin is your USDT. Your USDT is the margin. Your leverage is how big your trade size is in relation to your margin. But how you margin your positions, you can choose, right? So cross means that USDT is used to margin all of your positions at once. That means that if you have one position that loses a lot of money, it can wipe out your margin and therefore wipe out your other positions. If you want to use isolated, each individual position that you have has an amount of margin or an amount of USDT just siloed for that position. So that position can lose and you lose your USDT there, but your other positions are fine because they've got their separate amount of USDT available to margin them. Isolated, uh, maybe better for beginners if you know you just want to say, look, I've got some positions that I, I just are a little bit less risky. I've got some others that are, are risky. And so I don't want them contaminating my other positions. Um, cross is you know a little bit more professional because you can essentially uh, have profits in some that will pay for losses in others. Um, so it's up to you. This may be a little bit better if you've got uh, very different positions in your account, right? So you've got a Bitcoin position with low leverage which you, know, you think is not that risky. And then you've got like some crazy position with 20x leverage and you're thinking, look, I don't want that thing to easily wipe out my Bitcoin position. So maybe that would be better. Uh, maybe cross would be better, it's up to you. So I'm gonna press cross here, press confirm. We're in cross mode anyway. Now leverage, this is different. This is your position size versus how much cash you have tied up for it. So you've got $1,000 of cash and you use 2x leverage. That's a $2,000 position because the $2,000 position is 2x the cash that you have tied down. $1,000 down, $2,000 actual position with the market, 2x leverage on your cash. If you have that same $1,000 and you want to use 10x leverage, then you have a $10,000 position with the market funded by $1,000 of cash. One times 10 is 10,000, that's 10x leverage. So with the leverage here, all you have to choose is how much of the position that you actually want to fund. So you can work that out. So with 2x leverage, you're funding 50% of the position. With 10x leverage, you're funding 10% of the position. The reason this is important is because how volatile do you think the price will be? Right, if you've got a 10x leverage trade, that means that you can fund 10% of the position. If the position that you have falls 10%, your cash gets wiped out and liquidated the exchange will say, look, you've got no cash to fund this position. We need to get out of your position and fund the trade and close the trade and pay for the loss and that's it, right? You've got no money left. So really when trading futures, the only thing to be uh, cognizant of is how much volatility do you think there will be, right? If you think there's gonna be 40% downside potential, then you need to fund that 40% before it hopefully goes up again, right? If you think, you know what? I'm gonna use uh, 10X leverage or 5X leverage then that just means that you're funding less of that trade. And so the higher the leverage, the less downside percentage that you can handle before your trade gets liquidated. 
So you have to choose that. I'm going to use 2x leverage, which means I'm going to fund 50% of the trade, right? So press confirm like this. And that means that whatever my trade size is, because it's 2x leverage, I will be funding or have to fund 50% of that trade. Another thing to be aware of with leverage is that the leverage we're choosing here is only the trade leverage. So you have a $2,000 position funded with $1,000 as 2x leverage. However, your account leverage down here might be different. So let's say that I open a $2,000 trade and I've got $1,000 cash, 2x leverage. But let's say that I deposit another $1,000 into my account and I don't open any trades. My effective leverage in my account is nothing because I have a $2,000 position and I have $2,000 cash. So the effective leverage in my account changed because I made a deposit. When we're choosing the trade leverage up here, what we're saying is the trade that I'm opening, you can tie up in that trade half of it with 2x leverage, right? And so that goes into here. However, the effective leverage may be different. So let's say that I've got $10,000 in my account and I open a $2,000 trade with 2x leverage. That means that I open a $2,000 trade, I tie up $1,000 in that position, but my account has $10,000. So my account effective leverage is basically nothing, right? I'm actually uh, got more cash than my position is. So I've got no leverage at all. Uh, so that's just something to work out for yourself. It doesn't matter too much uh, the leverage you're using here. If you use 2x leverage and then withdraw half of your USDT from the platform, your effective leverage is going up, right? Even though you haven't traded, you have removed the cash that's funding those positions. So just check on your effective leverage and what you want that to be over time with your trades and if you make deposits or withdrawals from the platform. In order to open a position, it's exactly like a centralized exchange. So we can use market or limit orders, whichever one that you prefer. Uh, let's open a trade size here with USDT. So what do you want the trade size to be with the market? You can choose a Bitcoin amount if you want or the other assets, right? You can choose many assets. Go to the left-hand side, choose the asset that you want to trade, anything. I'll just show you with Bitcoin. So let's open a, a trade size like this. And then it's going to tell me down here that the margin that I have to put in is around $60. So it's actually a little bit over 2x leverage because uh, obviously we need to put $100 uh, down for funding half of the position. But in any case, that's the margin that I need to tie up. And we're, we're going to go long. So you can put TPSL in if you want. That's a take profit stop loss. So let's say that I want to buy here and I want a profit target of 150,000. And then I can say my stop loss price would be some amount, let's say 100,000 stop loss. You can put that in if you want. You can do your technical analysis. Uh, what I would suggest obviously is that the amount of leverage that you're using is very important to know. If I'm using 2x leverage, I can fund half of the position, which means that I can fund a 50% drawdown in the asset. Uh, now, if you're using, uh, let's say, 2x leverage, then you're going to get liquidated if the thing moves right down when it falls 50%. If your own stop loss is more than 50%, then the stop loss is irrelevant because you're going to get liquidated before your own stop loss. So if you have a stop loss, it has to be obviously within the bounds of the leverage that you're using. If you're using 3x leverage, that means you can withstand a 33% drawdown. If your stop loss is 50% down, it's going to be irrelevant again. Your, your stop loss would have to be 30, 28, 27% or something, whatever. That also means that if your own stop loss is around 30% away, you know that you can use 3x leverage, but you can't use 5x leverage. If your own stop loss is 10% away, you know that you can use 9 up to almost 10x leverage, and your own stop loss is going to stop you out before the liquidation would occur. So obviously, you need to choose that and, and work it out. So we are not going to put a take profit or stop loss in, but you can do that if you want. And we are going to uh, trade this size, press buy long like this. That's fine. And it should be immediate for us, uh, just like a centralized exchange. You can see I've now got a position. So I've got that position, 2x leverage. This is the entry price. That's the margin that I've got tied up. And this is my P&L, obviously profit and loss in the position. After you've got your position open, if you want to add a take profit or a stop loss, you can do that right down here. Uh, so click this edit icon and then choose the price level. So let's say that I want to put my take profit in here. You can see it works out exactly uh, you know, what the profit would be. And then this would be my stop loss like this, and you can just add them in. Those orders will be uh, linked to your open position. So those are, those are sell orders, right? So when you cancel this position, you need those sell orders uh, to cancel as well 
if they don't, then you could trade them and actually enter a short position. So you don't want that. But in any case, those are linked to the order that you have. So uh, once you cancel this order, uh, those will be canceled out as well. We can also use stop orders on Asta, which is uh, pretty good. So up in the top right, if you click the drop down here, you can use stop orders or trigger orders as they're known. That lets us trade with a take profit or a stop loss. So again, uh, if you want to sell out with a stop loss, let's say that you want to actually sell your order here. So you're long and you want to sell out if the price falls down. And that's your, um, you know, your order there to sell out a small loss. Now you can't use a market order because if you press market order, you would sell immediately. You also can't use a limit order because if you tell the system, I want to trade with a limit order and my limit price is 100K, then if the price is above that, it's going to sell out immediately. A trigger order prevents the order from going into the system and trading before the trigger price. That uh, lets us put the sell order in below the current price and wait till it gets there to go ahead and trade. That's known as a stop loss if you're long because you would be making a loss from the current price to stop you know, potential further losses. And that just helps us out with uh, risk management as well in the trades if we're using leverage. Asta also does have the trailing stop order type, which is usually used for uh, taking profits. Uh, again, on the sell side. So if you're long, let's say, you want to sell out of your trade at a profit. Well, instead of selling immediately with a market or a limit order or choosing the price with your limit order, you can press trading stop. And what that does is it enters the, tr the sell order into the system uh, with a, a delta away from the current price. So let's say that it's reached a price that you're happy to sell at. Instead of selling right now, what you can tell the system is, look, I, I'm willing to sell. However, if the price moves up, then I wanna track the price up as well and sell at a higher price. The way that we do that is to say to the system, I'm willing to sell with this delta of let's say 3%. So I'm gonna put 3% in here. What that means is if the price doesn't move up at all and just moves down directly 3%, then we will actually sell at a 3% worse price than the price is currently. We're taking the risk that the price actually moves up. So let's say it moves up 5%, my trailing stop will trail the price up at that 3% delta and therefore be higher. Now, if the price moves right down 3% again, my price doesn't move down and so I sell. So I've had that delta of 3%, but I've moved up with the price, so I've got a higher selling price. The risk that I take is that it doesn't move up, it just moves straight down 3% and then I get a 3% worse trade than the current price. But if you're in profit anyway and you're looking to sell, maybe that doesn't matter to you. You're taking a little bit of a flyer that you know you might actually move up with the price, especially in the bull market. So what you need to do is tell the system at what uh, what is the delta or the callback rate. So let's say three percent. I'm going to activate this sell order at uh, one two five, right? So I'm saying at 125,000, I'm willing to sell out of my position and take my profits. However, instead of selling immediately, I'm going to sell at worst three percent below, but potentially move up with the price and actually get a better price, and then choose the amount that you want to trade here. Uh, and then if you're long, you want to be selling or shorting then. And so sh uh, sell or short the amount that you want to sell out of the order. If you just want to get out of your trades, then you can easily do that down here. Just look at your open orders to the right hand side. You just want to close by. You can close by a limit order. I'll just close by a market order to get the thing done immediately. Choose how much you want to sell out. Press confirm that will trade out. Uh, and so I shouldn't have any positions right now. I'll leave the links below to Asta and also Apex where you can get a trading fee bonus as well and some other helpful videos down in the description below. I'm James, it's Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.